Okay, hello. If you remember in the previous video we were discussing about using that example program for playing back the data using the API and also getting used to some other capability for programming language in MATLAB. So now we are going to add some extra features just to show how to modify that program, something more relevant than what, what uh, we tried in that previous discussion. So, if you remember in that program, we have our, we were playing back and we were reading the, in the, for each LiDAR event, we were focusing our attention on LiDAR number one. So, I scanned from LiDAR number one, we were showing those in Polar and in Cartesian, yes, this is what we have. And then, we were also showing in global coin frame all the static infrastructure, the wall, the landmark, and the path that the machine did follow in the actual initial experiment, which we were playing back in that moment. And then we were showing also the actual pose here. We were showing that using this red triangle. And we also did something for creating a ghost that is irrelevant. That was some trick for playing with the program. Now what we want to do is whatever we see in the local coin frame of LiDAR number one to show this in the global coin frame. Doing the proper transformation from local to global, from the local coin frame of the LiDAR to the global coin frame. And we want to do the same for the LiDAR number two. It's a LiDAR which is uh, pointing back here. Okay, so I modified that program have a new program here to close this one and I add a few lines more. So the first what I wanted to do is to create a couple of plots here, graphic object. So uh, two plots, one is plotting blue dots and the other black dots. I post initially creating the object doing nothing, just plotting one dot for each of them at zero zero. So I got both handles in this variable. This will be an array of two handles. That is one of the steps, because I want to show those doing some animation during the playback session. The other thing that I did was uh, to get in vector 3 by 1 the pose of each of the LiDAR in the car going frame. We have x, y, and phi. I call this alpha in that variable showing or indicating the pose of the LiDAR in the car going frame. And you both poses of the LIDARs in the car coin frame, yes. And that was the initialization we need to do. Now the difference will be that when we are processing the LIDAR event, before we were reading just scan number one, you remember this one, yeah, because it was coming as we scanned, because both LIDAR were synchronized, we said that, and then now we are extracting scan from LiDAR 1 and it's come from LiDAR 2. So I get here range ranges 1 in meter and ranges 2 in meters and intensity, but I'm not using the intensity of the second one because I'm not showing anything about the second LiDAR scan except showing the points in the global coin frame now. So, okay, good. And if you remember, we used to convert from polar to Cartesian. I'm doing same thing. This was from before. Now I'm adding this line for doing the same operation, but now in this case with the LiDAR number two scan. Yes, I put different name to X and Y a component, you know, arrays of the Cartesian representation of each of the scan. Good. I don't care much now about intensity, so I'm not going to repeat this for second LiDAR. And yes, and after that I also had this. I implemented this function, which I'm not showing you to how is that, because uh, you will do that in your part of your solution. What I try to do here is that, yes, I do have X and Y, you know, component of the point detected by LiDAR number one in the LiDAR number one going a frame, so I'm converting to global. For that, I need to know what is the pose of the LiDAR in the car going a frame and also what is the pose of the car in the global going a frame. And I do something similar for LiDAR number two. So I get the point here, X and Y for each of the you know, points composing the LiDAR number one scan and the tattoo array here and I also do the same for the second LiDAR and finally I'm showing using the set function in MATLAB for 
updating the properties of this graphic object. I'm changing in this case the point and this is what is going to show in that uh, global coin frame. So if I run this thing now Okay, I have to stop this because I need to see what is the other figure. Here is the other figure. Yes, and this is the old one. I have to go. And again, this is my second program. Okay, good. Now you see, I'm going to stop immediately now. This is what is happening here. I'm showing in blue. The, it's the point corresponding to the LiDAR number one, which is for facing ahead I'm showing this in blue yeah, this is what they have here it's detecting these are poles detecting some shape of the pole yeah here the same and these walls which has a thickness of 20 centimeters so this thing will be 10 centimeters respect to the nominal center of the wall yeah and yes and it's doing the same for the back lidar which is pointing back here and it's capturing again 150 degrees field of view and it's capturing the other walls this is what is happening here and that's about it. So, using those few lines and doing the proper processing, in this case, the proper transformation from local to global, that is something that you already did in the tutorial and even in the quiz. You know how to do these things. So, yes, it's working well. This is well related to what you did in the first tutorial. Remember when you were converting from local to global, few scans. Well, now you are doing this in sort of real time because this is a, this event loop in which we are doing all this processing. They are happening in the way that it did happen in the real experiment. And it's happening very quickly, so we are doing all the processing, the performance that you would require in real time. So it's working well. Yeah, remember, this is the local coin frame, which seems to be a bit distorted because we are showing this certain deformation. This should be more realistic now, yeah? And this is in global. And everything seems to be matching well because I'm performing the transformation from local to global properly and because I also have a very good quality knowledge about the current pose of the platform. And I also know very well what is the position of each of the LiDAR respect to the car going in frame. So there is no I'm not introducing any error in that sense. And because I do the transformation from local, it seems to be in a proper way, so everything seems is matching well here. Okay, this is what I wanted to tell you. Yeah, and as you say, as you could see, I didn't need to include a lot of code, you know, a couple of lines here, yeah, just for refreshing that graphic object. Um, on the additional line here to convert to Cartesian, the scan from the second LiDAR, yes. The same here for parsing from raw data to range and intensity for the second scan, or for the scan from the second LiDAR. Um, yes, and before I also, out of the loop, outside of this loop, I got this parameter, which were the pose of each of the LiDAR in the car coin frame, yes. And I also created this couple of graphic objects with the proper properties, color, and the type of uh, object. In this case, I'm using dots just for the, uh, the couple of handles which I would later to use for refreshing whatever number of points I got from each of the LiDAR scans. Okay, this is uh, about what I wanted to show you in terms of modifying the program. I think you could start to imagine how to add new feature which you want to show in your visualization to show the operation of your program. Okay, good. I think we are done with this.